Hello everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to Nathan's bedroom. <clears throat> Pictures of cars on the wall <clears throat> today. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's an interesting thing going on in our street this morning. Uh, we've known about it going to happen for a while, but it is happening now. And I wonder if I can just show you what's happening. So here's the view of Orchard Headland. <clears throat> and there, our neighbours opposite, uh, I've been there for a few years, lovely young couple, uh, are moving. And there's the evidence of Gordon Ryan's removals. And there's the guys coming out of the front door with stuff from their house. So that's going to be going on for a while. And uh, I was thinking about it, I, I want to share a little bit from a verse in Isaiah. But uh, just thinking about moving house and what that means for, for families, for people. It's just, it, it's a huge thing, obviously. Um, there's the whole kind of perspective on life that you have, which you uh, live with when you're in a particular house. There's your your kind of hopes, your dreams, your comings and your goings, your disappointments, the meetings you've had, the visitors you've had. It's just kind of life has been associated with that house. Um, but now things are changing for our neighbours. They're going somewhere else. It's a huge difference. Claire and I have made a few a few moves in our lives and each move has brought a different perspective, something new. We've moved from one place and into another, from one perspective and into another. Well, I stumbled across these verses in Isaiah yesterday and uh, again, as it were, I've seen them before, but it really encouraged me and I share it with you. That in Isaiah 43, it says, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Listen to this, so, since you are precious and honoured in my sight and because I love you. I give men in exchange for you and people in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. And then the amazing little thing at the end, <clears throat> don't worry about your kids. I'll bring your children from the east and gather them from the west. <clears throat> I'll say to the north, give them up to the south, do not hold back. So it's, it was those, the very first two words that really struck me, actually, but now. But now. So their experience prophetically was one of um, national humiliation. Uh, the Jews carried off into exile. Uh, there was the shame. There was the disappointment. There was the slavery. Um, there was uh, difficulty and hardship for them all. But now here, prophetically, he's saying, but now. That was their experience. Um, that was to be their experience in terms of slavery. But now it's going to be different. There's something new which is going on. And the newness is a whole new um, experience of life. And if you just kind of cast your eye through some of the verses, it's, um, you know, first of all, just a sense that God has created them. But now... This is what the Lord says. I created you. I formed you. That's one thing. And then he says, um, don't be afraid. I have redeemed you. And then he says, when you fit, when you experience difficulties and figurative there, right, going through waters and fire, I'm going to be with you, says the Lord. It's going to be different now. It's, it's not just a continuation, but it's going to be different because it's a but now. And, uh, and just wonderfully, he speaks of his relationship. He says, you are precious and honoured in my sight, and I love you. That's part of the but now that, um, that he's wanting to communicate to, to them. And, uh, and also the, the bit at the end, you know, but now don't worry about your children, because I'm going to look after them too. So this whole thing about but now, <clears throat> uh, I don't know how you found the, the last months, or how you're finding life at the moment. There are things that press on us and there can be a, a gloom and a greyness and, and difficulties which we're experiencing. Um, and I wonder whether God wants to give some of us a but now 
uh, a new uh, experience, a new a new move from one place into another place, uh, which will brings hope and a new perspective. And just the reality is, whether we are experiencing gloom or difficulty, um, the reality for us as Christians is, but now he is with us in them. It's not just difficult, if that's what it is. It's difficulties with God. It's not just hardship, it's hardship with God. And he will bring us through and we are precious and we're valued in his in his sight. So you might think, well, this is uh, this is all just for this is just for the Jews. It's all prophetic and it's literature and so on. It doesn't really apply to me. But I, I felt yesterday when I looked at this, uh, the Lord saying, "No, this is for you. This is for us. This is for now. He's giving us a but now." And to give a New Testament perspective on it, in in one Peter two, twenty five, he says, "For you were like sheep going astray, but now." There it is, the phrase again. But now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. So as Christians, as we believe him, trust him, walk with him, we are in connection with the shepherd and the overseer of our souls. Anyway, that's my thoughts just to share with you briefly. Perhaps God wants to give us a but now or a, a new perspective um, associated with his new and fresh dealing with us as Christians. Um, just thinking of our uh, neighbours moving house, they're going to have a whole new perspective on life as they go to their to their new place, and all that that means for them, and so for us, and only much more. But that God gives us a new perspective because He's dealing with us, and He's with us, and He walks with us. So let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you uh, just for the realities of these things. Sometimes hard for us to believe, but we want to. Thank you that we are valued by you. We are precious and honoured in your sight. And um, you have given somebody in exchange for us. You've given your dear son Jesus in exchange for us as an all-time demonstration of your love for us. Lord, we are truly grateful for that. And I pray for, for each one of us for today that you would give us the life perspective that comes from living in the in the but now uh, with you, and um, that that would um, pervade our minds, pervade our souls today, that we can walk with this this sense of you being with us, and the sense of being valued by you. Thank you for your love and your care for us. Amen. Amen.